about a week ago now, I showed you guys five secret items in Fallout 4, and you guys really seemed to enjoy that video. Got a lot of good feedback as well as it did well view-wise. So now as you can hopefully tell if you do have working eyes, by the title of this video, I am back again with this time six items that are secret or hidden around Fallout 4's map. Things that even if you played through the game once or twice, you may have missed these items and just didn't know about their existence. Like my disclaimer on the previous video, I do want to say that some of you have seen at least some of these items. I tried to make this list pretty versatile, so hopefully you guys haven't seen every item on this list, but yes, some of you will have seen one, two, maybe even three or four of these items at some point in your multiple playthroughs. Have you seen everything on this list? Maybe you play too much Fallout 4 and that's a little weird, but either way, hopefully I can surprise you or introduce something new to you with this video. In addition, this video is going to be sponsored by my merch store at juicehead.net. you find a link to that down below if you're interested, and in addition, if you use the code MILLION, you can still get 20% off until the end of day today, that being midnight eastern time. But I know some of you hate these intros, so with that, we'll just jump into the regular video. So this was by far the most known or kind of requested one on the previous video. Comex is another chem in Fallout 4 that is really rare and you may have never experienced. With that being said, it's probably the most well-known item on this list, but just so many people were complaining about it not being in the previous video, I had to include it in this one. Comex was actually used as some kind of tranquilizer for animals before the Great War, but after it, it does have a different effect on humans. More or less, it's going to give you two times sneak attack damage as well as three perception and three agility. This one's unique in the sense that it's actually not at any fixed locations in the commonwealth, Comex is actually only obtainable through random chance at a vendor. And it is freaking rare. I hit up like three or four vendors when trying to film this video and none of them had it. I just had to spawn it in. In addition, it's actually the most valuable out of the rare chems. It probably is just the flat out most valuable chem in the game. But even though you may know about Comex, do you know about Comex Silk? Yes, yeah, so we got a little added bonus on this one. Comex Silk is actually a variant of Comex you can get through the Nuka World DLC. More or less, you have to go up to Maddox in the Nuka Town market and give him 10 bloodworm meat. I don't really know why he wants so much bloodworm meat, but either way, when you actually get that bloodworm meat and walk up to him, he's going to have a new dialogue option or his old one will be replaced. And then he's going to say, all right, let me throw some things together and I'll get you your new cam. Just come back in a little while. So after that, you actually do get this new Calmex Silk. It's going to be very similar to the previous one, two times sneak damage, three agility, three perception, but also three luck. It is visually identical to Calmex, and ironically enough, Calmex is actually visually identical to Medex. Seems like Bethesda maybe got a little bit lazy with these rare items. But either way, a pretty interesting one, and again, a very valuable chem in the game. Then we have one that I imagine a lot of you guys will actually like, that's going to be the Surgical Mask. There's just going to be a new mask in Fallout 4, and at first glance you probably don't think a Surgical Mask is particularly rare, but it's actually in only a few spots throughout the Commonwealth. In total, there are only six of these throughout the Commonwealth as a whole, some of them being placed down in like a container, but the easiest one is probably through a Settler at the Slog. It's just a Settler that naturally spawns there that is wearing it when you can take over that settlement. It definitely has a cool aesthetic to it. I mean, you are in the apocalypse, there is a lot of gross stuff going on, so you probably want something to protect your face and hopefully keep you healthy. Even beyond that, maybe you have a companion like Kiri and you want to really give her that doctor outfit, not in a slutty way, but actually in an appropriate way. It's going to be a great fit for things like that also. A fairly simple one, it doesn't really have any benefits otherwise, but another one that you may have just never realized was in Fallout 4. So this one's weird. Do you find coffee, coffee machines, there's even a DLC adding in a bunch of coffee, if you consider Creation Club DLC, but you may have not realized there are actual coffee tins in the Commonwealth. So yeah, they're going to be like the same logo as Slocum's Joe. This is not through the Slocum's Joe Creation Club item though. This is actually just going to be something of vanilla Fallout 4. And across the entire Commonwealth, there are only six coffee tins. Yeah, six. There's so many coffee machines and coffee cups and things like that. But I guess evidently everyone was really binging on that coffee leading up to the Great War. They have a pretty interesting design. It's just a kind of a standard coffee tin on one side. Then you have that kid's face on the other side, which, you know, maybe you want to wake up to that every morning, put this on your bedside. But this one too has a bonus. We also do you have the clean coffee tin, far more rare and far more fancy than the other old dirty one. The clean coffee tin is actually only going to have four across the commonwealth, two of which are in the institute that you could easily find and probably the easiest way to get this in general. The kind of tragic part about this is you definitely have accidentally scrapped these because they're automatically put into your junk category and when you transfer the junk to your settlement, you probably just accidentally used a bunch of coffee tins, not even realizing that they were rare. So it is possible to eliminate the coffee tins in the commonwealth completely with relative ease. This is another weird one that's just like, what the heck's going on here? 
There's actually an aluminum or aluminium oil can in Fallout 4. It's pretty much identical to the other oil can, except there's only two of them scattered across the Commonwealth. There may be other ones in random leveled lists and like junk containers, but as far as physical placements, there are only two aluminum oil cans across the Commonwealth, which is pretty crazy. Again, it's literally identical in appearance to the other one, just has a slightly different color. I'm not sure if some of Bethesda is feeling silly or cheeky or whatever, but he actually made it so the junk you get from this oil can is two oil and one steel. The junk you get from the original oil can, not the aluminium one, is going to be four oil and one aluminium. So the aluminium can doesn't give you aluminium, it gives you steel, while the regular one gives you aluminium and no steel. And also more oil, what's that about? I don't know, just another weird and wacky item in Fallout 4. Maybe some of you will watch this video, go to your settlement and build a shrine to the aluminium oil cans because of how rare and special they are. And some of you will watch this and never think about it again. Alright, so this one's actually really weird. There's actually napkins in Fallout 4. I didn't know about this until I was doing some research for this video. So the napkins are only going to be in a few locations, five to be specific, them having various amounts, but all of them having four or less. But in addition to some of their static locations, they're actually sold at the clothing vendor, which is really weird. So you can actually go to like an armor vendor in Fallout 4 and potentially find napkins. That's never actually happened to me, but just the fact that that was implemented into the game is really interesting. Even beyond all of that, even though you would probably think, oh, it's just a normal napkin, it'll probably give you cloth. No, it's a miscellaneous item. So unless you drop it or transfer it, it's not something that is scrappable. You have these napkins in your inventory potentially forever. I mean, I guess the Commonwealth is pretty dirty, so it's good to have these on hand and I guess this might be a way of Bethesda to encourage that, but just really interesting, a lot of the things about this. One, they're so rare, which I guess you could kind of get. People aren't exactly clean in Fallout 4, but why isn't it a junk item? Why is this a miscellaneous item? Very interesting. So I showed you how to get that stylish surgical mask, and now I'm going to give you another piece of face wear. I'm going to go out on a whim and assume you knew Fallout 4 had bandanas in it. You see them on raiders, you see them a lot of times on gunners, and even on occasion a settler or two. And there's a few different colors, you probably knew that also. But did you know one of those patterns is actually a leopard print? Yeah, so this is a very sought after item. Before recording this, I was actually reading a bunch of different forums, and a lot of people are doing a lot of things to try and get this, searching high and low and actually creating settler farms to just get a bunch of settlers and then obviously taking them down or disposing of them in some way. Yeah, so the leopard print bandana is not something you can just go and get. You have to find it naturally spawning and it has a very low spawn chance at different vendors or even again among settlers or enemies in Fallout 4. Once you get it, this thing is styling. I think there's no better way to actually take down some of the different robots, super mutants or whatever it may be than with this thing on and a good helmet. So that's pretty much it for this one, but before we wrap up this video, we're going to go over our psychology fun fact of the day, as we always do, or almost always do. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit differently, it's actually two persuasion techniques, it's not really a psychology fun fact, I technically learned this in a psychology class my freshman year of college, but psychology 101 is typically not really representative of what real psychology is a lot of times, it's mostly BS and just like the interesting stuff. Either way, what I'm talking about is something you guys probably know, and that's going to be the foot in the door technique. More or less what that is, is if you want somebody to do you a big favor, you start off by asking for a smaller favor. The likelihood is that yes, they will probably say yes to your smaller favor, and then later, after you have some rapport or something like that, you can ask for a bigger favor. So salesmen do this, like think of the stereotypical door-to-door -door salesman. Maybe he asks for a cup of water as he's at your door, and then he'll try and sell you on something much larger or bigger. Something that's lesser known is actually the inverse of this, I forget the name of this one, but more or less it's start by asking someone for a big favor, like hey, can you co-sign this car with me? And then likely they will say no to that, but then you could follow up with a smaller favor that in comparison seems way nicer and way easier, and in turn that person is more likely to say yes to that secondary favor that again seems much more minor compared to the large one you just asked for. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one, I hope you guys enjoyed this as always, and I hope to see you all next time. Later!